All right, let's uh, get this thing going. Hey, Mike, can you hear me? How's my microphone sound? Alright, so this is the original file that was sent to me. This is uh, Logan. He streams on Facebook Live too, usually his cuts and everything. Um, but he wanted a badge converted, so figured I would do it live for him as well. So this is the original file he sent me. He also sent me this file here. Um, pretty straight on. It's nice when usually when the customer sends me the file straight uh, but I was able to find this one this one's completely straight looks like it's on an angle a little bit so we'll have to manipulate that um, we're using Fusion 360 that's what I use for all my uh, conversions we'll start in a sketch I'm going to draw a line here just to see where horizontal is at. Actually, it looks like this thing's pretty horizontal right where it's at. To me, it looks like it's on an angle. Maybe it's just my monitor or something. But another way I can just test is just drawing a line from one of these corners. You can put this kind of on an angle, click this line, and then hit horizontal slash vertical, and it automatically snap to what it looks like or to horizontal or vertical so looks like it's kind of an unangle well, maybe a little bit I'm just going to rotate it just a tad I think one degrees might even be too much we're just gonna do like a half a degree mm, maybe not even that much I don't know, it doesn't look that far off, I guess. We'll just consider that one good. Typically, I like to draw these, and if I can do it, if it's a badge, if it's symmetrical, I'll just draw half of it and then mirror it over. I uh, didn't really quite look at this one yet, so I don't know what this thing is exactly. I have to look that up to see what that design is right there. The rest of it seems pretty straightforward. I should have a Vermont seal, something close to it. If not, we'll create one. But um, kind of like to overview it real quick before I actually start getting into it. That way I'm not backpedaling once I get into a little bit. So usually when I draw, I start from everything that's closest to you. So this kind of little badge area sits on top of these like little um, starburst things. Same thing with this ribbon. It kind of sits on top of everything. Um, and I think it would sit out higher than what this little pattern is down here. So, can you hear me at all? Am I, or am I talking to myself? We're going to start with this little shield here. I'm just going to do straight lines right now. There's not really any curve to them at all. So right now we're just starting with straight lines. Pretty simple. And I use hotkeys a lot, so if you see an icon come up and you don't see me like going to anything, it's because I'm using hotkeys. So I can hotkey my rectangles. Cool. Glad you can hear. Hotkey my rectangles. If I want to trim something, hit T and I can trim it. Hit E and I can extend it. Um, Q does my arcs. And I can just make an arc wherever I want to. I'm trying to think what else we got. O is an offset, so I can just offset something. So if you see me go through something and go, hey, how, how did you do that? Just Give me a holler and I'll show you where it's at up here because most of the tools are up here. So just trimming those. Um, I might want to move that up just a tad bit just because I want this to have a nice sharp point and it kind of spills into this ribbon a little bit. So I'm going to cheat it a little bit just to give it a nice little gap here. So 
see if we can offset this if it fits on the same kind of arc. Yep, looks like it does. Again, I'm just drawing half of this. I'll mirror it over, make my job a lot easier. Now I'm using arcs, three point arcs. This allows me to get kind of these odd shapes out of here. Some of it's kind of a guessing game too as you go. Oops, I don't know why I went down there. This thing goes this way. Sometimes when I have these like little sharp corners right here, I'll just, there's two ways you can do it. Kind of just pick off each side and I'll go back and just trim it. Kind of smooths it out a little bit. Or what you can do. Inside. Or what you can do is hit S on your keyboard and it brings up the short sketch shortcuts. Um, I kind of have like my shortcuts right here. You can preset those. Or you can type anything you want. If you want a line, you type in line on an arc. You, it'll bring up all the arcs. Um, right now I'm going to use a fillet. If I select these two things, it'll automatically fillet that. And then I can kind of let it know how much of a fillet I want. I prefer just doing three-point arcs most of the time. Oops. Kind of clean that up. Sometimes you don't notice little details like that from a distance, but for the time it's worth, I just do it. Here's the bottom of that. Trying to see. Looks like this goes out a little bit more. Maybe not, though. I'm just going to keep it right there. I'm supposed to have uh, Logan, the guy that uh, I'm creating this badge for on here soon. Thought he was coming, but maybe not. You can also click corners when you're doing fillets and it'll automatically know that that's what you're trying to do. Should make a hot key for a fillet. Let's do that. We'll show you. So fillet, fillet. Um, Fillet is over here. So if you go to the command that you want to hit the little three dots to the right hand side, you can change keyboard shortcut. Um, let's change it to H. H conflicts with hole. We never use the hole. So H. So every time I click H, it'll just bring up the fillet command now. Oh, it actually looks like this uh, sweeps around here. Creates a little knob on here. And I do mess up as I'm going a lot of times. So then once I zoom out and see it or look at the other side, I see what I'm actually supposed to be doing. And T for trim. E for extends. And I think I'm just going to put a little arc right there. I think it looks something like that. Hide all these. I don't like these. I like to show my points though. That'll let me know if I got ends of lines that aren't connecting. How's it going, Mike? And still, Marshall? Again, that kind of gets a little wonky in here. Try to look over here to see what it actually looks like. Or if I see this and I, uh, this one kind of looks a little weird compared to this one. This one seems a little bit easier over here to see what's actually going on. You can always just mirror this side.
I'm going to give it a little bit more rounded look. looks like the shading kind of changes right there. If you have any questions on what I'm doing, feel free to shoot them out. If you double click in uh, Fusion, it'll highlight all the arcs rather than like shift clicking and highlighting just a couple. Double click. Try to round that a little bit better right there. Same thing with this. Kind of don't like how it looked. H for fillet. I'm going to go to mirror this. I'm just going to mirror this one over so I know where it sits over here. So one of the nice things about actually drawing these compared to um, using a converter is uh, I know everything that's going to be in here. Typically you use a converter and um, what tool? Uh, like what, what program? Uh, this is Fusion 360. You can pull that up real quick too. It's an AutoCAD product. Um, you can download it for personal use only, and it's free. Otherwise, uh, subscription is pretty cheap also. So, uh, paid every three years. So, so a three-year uh, purchase is only $1,300. So, you can pay $60 a month or $4.95 annually. All great deals on what it is. And Fusion has a lot more tools. I think I went over this last time, but... It's not just the designing. You can render your things if you make 3D files. You can create animations if you're making assemblies. Um, you can actually create your own tool pass in here that will export out to a lot of different um, posts, a lot of different machines. But it also, like inside the manufacturing aspect too, you can, uh, for so see there's milling, turning, additive, like 3D uh, printing inspection for like coordinate measuring machines. Um, not sure what fabrication is. Probably pretty close to um, milling. And then there was another. There was another one. It it will do laser engraving as well. I believe I haven't ever done it, but oh, the actual tool selection. Um, so typically, I use a three point arc. Um, that's over here in arc, three point arc, and you can see my hotkey is Q right there. So three point arc, and I'll use that for probably 80% of the drawing for all the lines at least. A lot of lines are offset, a lot of lines are just straight lines. So we'll finish this portion down here. <clears throat> doesn't look like we're hitting it exactly yeah no problem doesn't look like we're hitting it exactly but I think it kind of catches the spirit of what we're trying to do here you can see this one over here kind of swirls differently compared to this side over here but we're just going to keep it symmetrical and this one was a lot easier to see same thing here you can see on this badge it kind of has the two little uh Parts of it that look connected compared to this one over here does not look connected. I kind of like this look over here a little bit more. Let's see if uh, how this will transfer over to the other side and line up. Kind of want to go. Like that a little bit. And we'll connect them. <coughs> Something like that. I think that looks a lot better than these two little individual ones right here. Oh, it's actually, those two actually line up with where these two are at. I'm going to go ahead and delete that one out of here then. 
Looks like we got into a new sketch on accident. <coughs> so. I'm going to copy this with Control C, get out of that sketch, go into this sketch, and paste it in there. It'll paste it in the exact same location. Eh, close enough, right? That looks good. And we'll mirror all that over at the end. I'm just going to get rid of that so I don't double mirror it. Usually do text last as well, and we'll make it a little bit more even than what this badge currently looks like. Use the offset tool, bring this down. Might stick out a little bit, that's okay, we can trim it. Same thing here, just to keep those parallel. Rather than trying to sit in here and draw it, you can see how far off my little bit, not, not really that far off, but when you do that a lot of times, um, it just makes everything that much more cleaner at the end, end product. <coughs> Offset this one. Go ahead and trim those with T, trim tool. There's an extend tool, and then T. T's my trim. I'm gonna hit E here to extend that line. It kind of um, it'll it'll push your extends out to the next point it runs into. You can see it kind of just ran into this one. Um, go back real quick. If I had a line here, it'll run it up to that line next. Kind of how the extend tool works. Um, not gonna draw this line at the bottom. I'll just offset it. And then we only want half of it because we're going to mirror it, make it look pretty. Thanks. I got a lot of years doing this. I got 13 years um, using CAD software in general. Started with uh, basic AutoCAD, probably 2003 maybe in high school. And went to college, went to community college, got my associate's degree in mechanical design. And from there, turned it into my day job of doing CAD and engineering. So I use, I don't use this software in my day job, but um, got lots of experience in it. So 13 years total, eight professionally. Um, this one kind of bleeds over onto here. I'm not gonna <coughs> make it so tight. Just bring it off there just a little bit. Nobody will ever know. We can round these corners off if we want to to kind of give it not so an aggressive look. We'll see how it looks in the end and see if we would really want to round them. Sometimes rounding those corners look nice and sometimes not. I'm going to offset this. Looks like it fits there. Extend it. Trim it. You can see this is why I keep points on. If I didn't have points on, I would have never seen that's not connecting. And when you're doing, uh, well, it looks like I got two lines here too. When you're doing uh, creating vectors for CNC machines, you need to have all your loops closed. So this would be considered a close a loop right there. Um, I think most of you know what I'm talking about when I explain that already, but. So you can see this one's just barely off. That'll cause an issue down the line. Yeah, uh, which one, the building? Yeah, so I can bring up the file he's talking about real quick. Might take a little bit to load. I can get a drink here. So yeah, this is that file you're talking about. This is broken up in Quite a few sketches here. I'm trying to see which one has all the points. So this is the file I created for Daniel, as he said. Um, I had to two, draw two vehicles, move this vehicle over, then finish the rest of the building. Started with the building, but um, Daniel's going to be cutting this here soon, and he does epoxy pouring. Pretty cool what he does with his uh, woodworking. 
But yeah, there's a lot of details. This was a long file conversion. Make it seem quick, but um, there's just a lot of details. And I got to make sure everything's a closed loop. So that's how I do all my stuff. Wizardry. Mm, maybe don't need to offset it that far. But we're going to create these little fins down here. Kind of done with this ribbon up here. And we'll have to figure out what's going on up here. Might just draw it and match what's up here exactly and hope it works out. But and I'm shift clicking those to select multiple lines. If you single click them, it'll just highlight one. You can shift click and it'll highlight two of them. And then you can hit your O for offset and then it'll do all of them. The only thing you can do is hit double click and it selects all the lines that are inside that closed loop. And then you can do an offset like that. But I just want these ones just to, so I don't have to trim them up later. So it looks like these kind of go in a pattern of kind of bright and then uh, shadowed. Um, we'll try to create that effect again. Yep, he just cut it. He just cut it yesterday. Yesterday or the day before. I'm trying to think how I want to do this. And this might take a couple, couple shots at just to figure out how I want to do this. I wish I could pattern this as well, but I don't think these will pattern out. So I'm just going to have to draw them individually. Let's try this second one here and see how this one will turn out. Use the offset command just to keep those lines parallel as well. So the way that we can kind of create this effect of a shadowed then non-shadowed is even when they cut it, it'll make it so that it's every other. Um, what I'm going to do is just offset all of these. Oops, it's not going to like that. Stand. Trim that. Okay. So now I can grab these ones. Offset them. Then I'll just trim them. That way when you go to carve this, it'll make it so that this one's guaranteed carved and this one's not guaranteed carved. Or vice versa. This this loop is carved. Come on. This loop's carved and then this one is not carved. So that's how we'll make that little effect down there. I think that'll look good. Sometimes these details are so small that you're not able to get it. So <coughs> the other way, the other thing we could do is just not include these. And just kind of create two separate ones. Um, that way if someone is like epoxy pouring this, they can make this one a bright gold and then this one like a brown. Uh, I'm going to go with the other way I had though. I think that way will look kind of cool. I'm just going to outline all these first and then I'll go back and kind of clean them up. I don't know if I didn't drink enough today or what, but my like me talking is like I feel like I'm destroying my voice right now. I have to like clear my throat. Lots of offsets, but makes the file nice and clean. These look like they're kind of round, rounded over, but I'm gonna keep them nice and sharp. Um, by doing this method as well, it makes it so I can have a nice sharp point right here compared to where the other one. If I did an offset, it uh, 
it would remove that point. Oh, yeah, I think you get what I'm saying. I'm not going to redo it. And these gaps might not be even. This gap from this one to this one might not be even. You can type in your actual value in your offset. So I could do negative uh, 0.5, and it'll be exact on every single one. But for what it's worth, it's not worth me typing that out every single time. I can kind of eyeball it. And again, once we get this half done, we can just mirror it over. One last little little guy here. It's a little feller. Go through and clean all these up, make them individual. Using a push T for trim. Um, you can drag or you can click. So you can click these individually. Oops, so I did the last one. Or you can just drag. It'll trim them all up. Click and drag. I'm not going to fill in this area right here. I call this like the void area, the area between each of these like little feature. I just call it like a void area. Um, I'll put a border around the outside of it at the end. That'll kind of close it all in. And then when I create that border, it also just will make like a little shape. Same thing as this, just completely offset. O, O's offset. When you hit O, um, sometimes it'll have chain selections on. So you can uh, just, if, if that's on, it'll automatically select everything that's inside of like a loop. But if you clear it out, hit undo that, clear the box, it'll just do one line. Not doing all of them. These time lapse. I make time lapse videos every once in a while and the whole time it's just me sitting there going like this, it seems like. Just zooming in and out. Just using the middle mouse. Um, for the inside here, just to keep it all uniform, that's what it's all about. I'm going to just offset this line. That way when it goes down down the line and I created all these little shadow effects, um, it'll be nice and uniform. I don't need to do that one. Oops, I don't know why I trimmed that line there. Oh man. And to undo that, it's Control Z, kind of a standard uh, Windows function. So I can hit Control Z and it'll undo the last command, or I can hit Control Y and Y goes forward in time. So I can undo and undo basically again little time consuming but this is what you got to do to get a clean file if you want quality work where your badge looks good this is what is needed if you know a better way then you can do that too but this is what I do. And after doing it a while, you kind of know what to look out for and learn your little own little tricks along the way. 
another reason why I leave points on. I created that little line right there. I offset it and it put that out there. So for sure moving that saves it so that when somebody goes to cut this, same thing here. This line didn't make it all the way there. Oop, still didn't make it all the way there. And this one's a little, this one, so this one's not going to be exactly the way it's at, but we're still going to make it so it has that little shadow offset. Little shadow in the inside. Um, over here, oh, you can't see that on the right hand side. Weird. So there's a sketch palette on my screen. Let's see if I can just snip that and send it into chat. I can't, I can't uh, put it on there. Weird. So on the right hand side of my screen, there's a box that says sketch palette. Um, and the only box that I have on right now, well, you might be able to see it once I, once I screenshot it. Yeah. Okay. So once I screenshot it, you can see it. So I'm just doing this show points right here. Typically show profile, show points, show dimension, show constraints is all highlighted. I just have it so I show points. That's weird. There's a lot of weird things when I'm like just streaming just the software, it cuts it out. Same thing like when I hit the S key, I remember from last stream, it didn't show um, the little window that pops up. I think we got all these. I'm just going through and making sure that we got all of it. Nope. So it looks like we forgot this one. <clears throat> Glad you asked that question, though. Thank you. Okay, so got these, got this ribbon, um, got the outside of this, and I think these are done. We'll, we'll, we'll see once we go into our software. We verify it that it um, is correct once we bring it into the next software. <coughs> So we'll finish this little area out here. Extends, extends, trim, and offset this line. Trim. Um, I'm going to put a circle here. Our badge is going to be a little off center. Probably maybe don't get the center line exactly perfect, or maybe the image I'm stealing right now to trace is actually has that little circle off. But just putting this here for reference for when I insert the seal, I know where to put it on center too. I think we got all of this now. I think the only thing that we have really left is that top portion, which is kind of funky. Um, I don't know exactly what it is. It looks like this might be a leaf right here. That looks like a hook with maybe some string on it. It's hard to tell. I'm going to mirror this over right now. Just so I know where everything hits over here. I'm also going to offset this just to keep the two loops separate or I know where to stop the features at. I don't know exactly. This looks like a leaf to me. Wait, wait, let's look at the other. Is the other badge like this? Yeah, so that's the original badge that was sent. Here's the one I found online. Yeah, so here's the one that the other image that was sent.
I don't know. Go just kind of make it look like that. They got a funny story about trying to make images look like um, something. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll show it later, but... Essentially was given a blurry picture, and I made it to the picture that was given to me. Then come to find out there was a better, higher quality picture. And after seeing what I created compared to um, what was given, the second picture in high definition, it was pretty funny what I came up with. I was like, wow, I was way off. I was close, but I was way off. And this is the elliptical uh, ellipse command. Create ellipse. I don't know if you guys can see that at all. This looks like a hook of some sort up here. Not exactly sure what's what this is. Yeah. This this image is just really blurry. Sometimes I'll turn points off just to kind of reduce the noise of what's going on here. It is hard. It's hard to say what that is. I know that these are like little things that are wrapped around it. So we'll draw our best impersonation of what that is. We're talking small details here too. So at the end of the day, we might just outline this top portion because it's kind of uh, small details that might not even matter once it's finally cut. But we'll put our best effort. We got most of it done already. It didn't take too much time. Yeah, forty. we're at 40 minutes right now of converting this, starting from scratch. Yeah, I know. I don't know. This one's got me. I hate doing this sometimes, but you work with what you got. Looks like this has some kind of little feature in the middle here. I don't know if this is another leaf or what exactly. These look like they're the same. I can kind of show off the um, pattern feature. So we're going to do a circular pattern objects. We'll do this. Center point's going to be this arc. I'm going to do it at an angle. And we want to bring that across. Looks like maybe five times. Make it nice and clean. Sweeps across that very nicely. Turn my points back on. I'm just going to try to draw something right here. Again, not sure what it is. Looks like some kind of leaf right there. See how that turns out. <clears throat> I think that's 
still got open loops here. Looks like we might have to draw a little bit more here. Just kind of following this and making what I, again, like I said, the void area. I'm going to offset all of this. Open up that little void area again. Trying to just close this loop up. Mm, looks like it might be closed right there. Yeah, so it's closed. There. That's the weird loop I just made. Try and make another one over here. because it is all badge material right there. Not a clue what it is right there. This looks like the bottom of a, a bell of some sort, or I'm not sure. These look like two separate pieces as well. So I'll just draw it, offset it, create that in the two little sections right there. And I think that kind of wraps it up as far as that goes. And I'm just going to go through and double click all these features so that we can mirror them over. And then we'll bring it into our next program to make sure all the loops are officially closed. Mirror, one that. Sometimes they take a little little bit once they uh, get kind of involved, but this one wasn't bad. Pretty straightforward badge. You can see our lines don't li match up perfectly, but they are pretty close. And if once you look at it at the end, it's just going to be all nice and symmetrical. See a lot of points here. I'm just going to double check to make sure that those lines aren't extending too far out over each other, or if at all. Looks like we didn't get this right here, which is kind of weird. Wonder why that didn't. So you can see when I double click this, it's supposed to do the whole loop area, but it didn't do this bottom half right here. Um, if I look at where these connected, if I zoom way in right here, should be a little area that's, yeah, there it is. See that little blue right there? So now if I double click it, now it's now it's a complete loop. So delete that out of there. I deleted my mirror line, so I just got to draw another one again. 
the mirror, select the mirror line, that. So now those are closed. What is this? What is this little sketch right here? I don't know. We had an extra sketch in there. All right. So we can do the text now. And we can offset this. Select both of those. Offset. And I created another sketch again. So we got to go back to the sketch. Offset. Let's say right there it looks good. We're going to do my hat key for text is A. Otherwise, it's right here if you can see that. Take a screenshot of the window I'm looking at right now. Uh, so, this is what it looks like on the right hand side of my screen right now. A for text, and I'm going to want to select this one right here. It makes it so I can put it on a on an arc. So once I select that arc where I want it to go, oh, that's weird. So one of the issues with fusion when you do text on an arc, you can't select multiple arcs. See, I was just doing one highlighted area. I'm gonna have to make a spline. Once you make a spline of this, it makes it so you can. Um, put your text on a spine. The other alternative to this is, you can just make a simple arc right here. It's not gonna be perfectly concentric with these with this arc right here, but nobody will ever know. So once you select on that area, on that line, it brings up a more advanced text window. So we'll put our text in here. Let's say chief, our path is gonna be that little blue line font select your font you can bold or italicize it we'll play with the height a little bit you'll see um, this makes it so it's either above the line or below the line the blue I usually do fit to path also um, this makes it so that the letters will space perfectly along um, this blue line right here that our path is on um, if the text is upside down which will probably be the case we'll have to flip it and then also flip it the other way So text on that arc, we want it to say chief. And <laughs> an arm holding a broadsword. Mm. That's what I drew. What are you talking about? That looks like what I got. You can tell right here the arm and the sword. Just kidding. I don't know what it's. I don't know. I got nothing. Typical font I would use for most of the time is uh, Calibri. It carves nice, looks clean, nice square letters. This is where the fit to path kind of comes in. Um, so if we do don't do fit to path, it's just gonna. Um, default to the spacing on there. I'm going to want to fit it to the path because it, I know it's going to be about this wide right here. And this is a little big. So kind of play the guessing game here. Eight. Eight might match up with where they got it, but we want to kind of keep it centered. So six. We, we might want to go with seven. Yeah, seven looks good. Looks like it's a little high right now, but we can just bring that down a little bit. Our letters look a little skinnier too. So We'll beef them up a little bit with bold. I think that looks good right there. I'm going to go through and just draw all these uh, text real quick. And then should be able to bring it over. So I need to flip it on the other side. And then the two flip buttons that I showed you. Um, keep it fit to path. Same thing. If I did not do fit to path right now. It would just put it on default spacing. 
Um, you can select your what your character spacing is right here. <coughs> it's just a whole lot easier for me to do this fit to path from my experience when making these. 12, 12 looks good. Looks like our letters are a little thin. Looks like we pretty much nailed it as far as keeping that font the same. It's weird how one little font will make it so like the L is just that much closer to the L in some situations. Um, I'm actually going to do the state of Vermont. Let me take a look real quick to see what my seal, how close my seal is. My seal that I have. And I'll show you guys what I got here in a second. I just can't leak any information or try not to leak too much information on stream. What are we doing, Vermont? So this seal does the seal I have on hand does not match the seal that um that one is. So we might try to create the seal. Um, not draw it, but just do a uh, conversion. We're using escape and convert it over to a similar seal. I don't know why states have different, uh, more than one seal either. It just is maddening when trying to do these. Because you're like, cool, I got all the seals, and then all of a sudden, a different kind of seal. Or even like the state of Vermont will be laid out different. Sometimes they'll have lines in there. Sometimes there's stars instead of these dots. Sometimes the dots are bigger. Sometimes it doesn't say freedom and unity. It'll have it all, and then like there's a cow right there. And it's like, who, who standardizes these? Um, I'm going to go ahead and put the state of Vermont on here. Just to get it over with. Oops, that's the way we want it. Just in case I need it down the line. That way I don't have to jump back into Fusion again. Although I probably will have to no matter what. Q is my uh, three point art. Again, this one's kind of sitting a little high there. I'm just going to try to eyeball it and make it like it make it look a little bit more uniform than what it is right now. Springfield. Let's try ten. Oh, nine. Eh, a little big. I think that looks good. Eight. Always check your spelling. Even if I say that, I still do it wrong. I've had plenty of customers go, hey, you uh, mix your I and your E backwards or something like that. So for Fusion 360, you need to explode the text. Once you, once you have it, you can select it while you're in the sketch, right click it, and then explode text, and it creates it into just loops. You can't just export it like that. Okay, I think we're good here. I don't think I missed anything on this. Pretty simple badge. I'm going to finish that sketch. Here's what it looks like in Fusion without um, without the image behind it. Kind of cool. I like the blue. Came out pretty clean. Oh, looks like you're sending me the seal. Nice. I'll definitely use that. Thank you, dude. See how good I can clean that up. Give you a little tutorial on how to use Inkscape to convert images to 
SVGs. That might have been an SVG format that you sent me also. Here's what he here's what he sent for that link. Could have clicked on it too. But yeah, nice little cleaned up image. Even even if we uh look at it still, it's it's not the same. <laughs> you know what I mean? These like little ribbons are a little bit different. Um yeah, not not the exact same, but I think it's probably accurate. Yeah, the badge is probably less accurate. So what you'll need to do, and I don't know if you can see this, you'll right click on it and you save as DXF. Um, I'm not going to show you the, where I'm saving it, just to save people's identities. But give it a name. We'll name this one Chief of Police. Uh, badge. State of Vermont. The reason I give it such a long name when I do that is just because uh, when I'm trying to search some of these files, I'll find one that's similar. And I'm like, I know I drew this already. I'm not going to go back and spend all that time. If I just need to change the seal out, maybe from chief to lieutenant or something like that, or just something silly, I can search it down the road a lot easier. So imported that. You can see all the pink lines. And this is a carbide create. This is a kind of a standard uh um program for shape hoco users this is the program that they use um, i think it exports in gbrl i think a lot of the cnc machines also use that kind of format um, but this is what i kind of started doing cnc with so i kind of know it a little bit it's not the easy it's not the most advanced program but it does what i needed to do um so and it gives nice little cues as for what I'm doing as well. All the black lines are solid closed loops. If you see pink like these, these lines right here, they're not closed. Um, you can see right here it's not closed also. But this program's nice because you can close them right there. I'm just shift clicking these, connecting them. I'm just saying, yep, those are closed loop now. Closed loops. That's all I got to do. Just make sure these are closed. I'll go back on that one. Okay, that looks good. So yeah, this file is basically done at this point. There's not a lot of closed loops. So we didn't really mess up any endpoints. Um, we just gotta find that seal and convert it now, and we can slap it on there. I'm gonna save this real quick, just so I don't lose it in case something happens. Um, let's, I'm going to actually export this as an SVG real quick and we can kind of get an idea of what it actually looks like in Inkscape as well. So here we are in Inkscape already. Inkscape is also a free program. Um, Carbide, creates a, or, uh, yeah, Carbide creates a free program. You can create tool paths in here and a lot of people just um, create their files in here. Uh, tool paths, G codes. But so I'm going to import. So here's something. For some reason, inside Carbide Create, these circles will automatically like get off center. And I don't know why it does that. So we got to go back here. We have to import our file that we created. And we got to put this back over here. So once you put it back over here and save it, it'll now all of a sudden um, accept it. That that circles position. Okay. 
kind of a bug in the software, but you learn to use what you got. Whoops. So now it's nice and on center. I realized something I got to change on this file already, but I'll do that when I go back to it. So kind of see how it turned out. You can see how this is every other right now. Once we add a border, those will actually flip to the way that the other one was. Um, usually when I make these two, I want to make sure that I'm carving Chief, Police, and Springfield. The carved areas are usually the black areas. Um, same with the state. State of Vermont will want to make sure that we make those black so that they're carved on a regular image. Let's play with this seal real quick. So we need to get a working seal to import into Carpet Create. So I'm just going to import it. And then if you go to path trace bitmap, I think that's pretty close to what we're going to want. Let's see if we can get these trees. Oh yeah, there we go. So that was pretty straightforward. It's not always that easy. Mm, see it kind of distorted the cow a little bit. But that's okay. The rest of it kind of got pretty pretty clean. What we can do is go back here, path, trace bitmap, maybe update that brightness threshold a little bit. So it looks like that helped it out. We just got to find that happy line to where these trees aren't filled in and everything has a nice solid line on it. So let's try there. That looks pretty good. So I'm going to do save as. Name that Vermont seal. I should probably save it in my seals folder. Where is it at? Where is it at? Where's my seals folder? So one thing I said I forgot to do, um, I'm going to create a little border around this. I mentioned that earlier, but we're going to actually do it now. So highlight everything outside. I'm going to guess at a point 0.1 is typically what it is. Apply that to the outside. Creates this nice little border around here. You can see it also creates these other little things inside of here. Um, this is one I was talking about earlier. We want to keep these. Then we want to keep this outside one. We don't want this because this was a void area in that badge. I think it's a void area. Maybe it's not. Maybe that's how the badge actually is. The lighting kind of threw me off a little bit. Yeah, I think I think I'm wrong on that. We might want to go into fusion and actually make this symmetrical now that I'm looking at it. Huh. This one doesn't look very symmetrical. I think it's supposed to be like that though. So what we'll do, just delete that. Mirror it. Now we're symmetrical. Yeah, that thing's way off. I thought it was like the bottom of a bell of some sort. So let's do save as DXF, export it. And do that. Oh, 
Oops, that is not the file I wanted to import. Oh yeah, it is. Oh, I'm all over the place right now. Sometimes you just start working and things explain themselves as you're going. It's got to be a little bit bigger. Something like that. Looks pretty uniform. Maybe it's over to the left a little bit too far. Nobody will ever know. All right, so back to where we were. We're going to create a border here on the outside. Point one. Apply that. We want to keep this outside one, so we're going to shift click that one. And we want to keep these two little guys. And then when I hit is delete on my keyboard, it'll get rid of all that extra little things that it created when I did that offset. So now we can import our seal that we created. Kind of scale this down. Um, just want to give a little shout out to, I haven't really done this yet, but um, I skipped some of the comments. Sorry, Andrew, uh, yeah, Fusion 360, Carbide Crate, and Inkscape. Yep, thank you. Looks real good, thank you. That was easy. Sure, real easy. Um, so we're gonna scale this. I'm gonna make sure we make this as one solid thing. Um, when this, when I bring this in, if I click one thing, it kind of doesn't select everything. So if you highlight all of it, click this little triangle with the dash to the tr uh, square box, it will create a little plus. But every time I click on it now. It makes it so it highlights everything. So I'm going to just scale this until it looks kind of good. I know this state of was kind of off center as well, I noticed. So we can move that over. State of. Zoom out a little bit. It's like hanging a photo kind of got to zoom out sometimes to see how far off you actually are. Looks like this one's over to the right a little bit. I think once I move this a little bit to the left, I think we're going to be pretty close to being on center there. Is our, is our picture level now? I think so. All right, so last thing we'll do is just, um, we're gonna export this, bring it into Inkscape, and we're gonna make sure that our letters are all carved. Um, we'll make sure that some of these details are the correct thing being carved too. I think I'm gonna have to, and this is just from experience, I think I gotta offset this um, just to get these letters carved. <clears throat> and that's a little bit too much. That's a little bit not enough. Did I do one last time? I think I did one. Yeah. So we'll add that little border around it. Nothing that's not typically that you wouldn't see. I'm just gonna move those off to the side for now. We're gonna import Chief of Police badge. Okay. Let's see how it does. So it looks like we got it off. It's backwards. Um, Springfield's good. Chief is good. 
we're going to want to add a little border on this inside one. And then we will remove that border that we just added just to get everything good. Um, the way I know that's correct is because this is the shaded area that we wanted. So that border around the outside will um, kind of switch it one way or the other. I don't like the way that this is all dark. I think I'm going to want all these features carved. So I will actually add another border on offset on the inside of where it's at state at. Oh no, once I remove that border, it'll make it so state Vermont and then all this will be switched as well. So we said we're going to add a little offset there. We'll do one to the inside here. Just a little one. We can be a little bit more generous. So we are kind of modifying what the original file was, but I mean, we're trying to make something that's carving friendly and looks good. And people aren't going to look at it and go, hey, this, this extra border right here, that's not on the, the badge that I gave you to create. So export this again. Delete that out of there. Actually, we'll just put it over to the side, just so we can see what what we what we had and what we are going to be. <clears throat> oh yeah. I don't like how all of this is black right here. I think we want to make that not all carved as well. It'll make that file look that much cleaner also. So you can see our state of Vermont is, and this inside, all those black lines will be carved. So what we're gonna do, same thing as what we did up here with the police, just add another border to the inside, and then we'll have to add a border to this state of Vermont seal. To the outside because it's going to want to flip both of those inside and then this will everything inside this was correct so we got to add a border to it hopefully that makes sense So this is the first one. This is after we played with it a little, little bit. And then we're, this should be a final product on this one, I believe. I think this one will be out the door, good to go. We'll take a quick gander at it though. Yeah, so I think that's how we want it to look right there. I think that looks super clean. Gives us everything we want. Um, yeah, I can. Since you're asking, I wasn't going to, but if you're going to ask, so when I import it, it just brings in the lines. I'm hitting Control Shift G, and that's going to create each of these little lines into their own little uh, identities. Creates these into their own little identities. Um, that command, let me see. Let me see what the command is actually called here. Uh oh. Why is it still doing that? Okay, so we import it. Blah blah blah. Yes. Okay. So object, uh, control shift G, where's it at? Control shift, it's under one of these windows. Um, 
shift control G. So we're ungrouping. That's what it is. We're ungrouping all of these lines inside of here. And then what we're doing is we're going to do path and exclusion, and it makes it so every other one's black and white. Logan, you can jump in this phone call if you want to. I tried calling both of you guys earlier. So, yeah. So typically when I hand when I give these out or to to my customer, what I provide is I'll provide this one, and this one's just basic line sets and I'll just name it the original file name, just uh Chief of Police State of Vermont badge. Um, the file after that is will be this one, and I call that the positive. Um, the reason I provide a positive one is for laser engravers, and then there's also a negative, which we can actually do right now. Let me get all this other stuff out of here. I'll save as... Uh, where... Positive, okay. So now I'll get that out of here. And then the negative one, um, I believe Cricut users uh, need the opposite layers filled. And I'll leave this on my uh, Stymo Originals Facebook page. Um, so if you... I imagine most of you are from my Facebook page. Give myself a little shout out as I wrap all this up and answer your final questions. Yeah. So if you want to give my give uh, my page a like, that would be awesome. Um, just helps promote what I do, and uh, you can see constant new updates. Just released some of these on PatriotNations.com. Um, I'm a partner with them, and it's a group of four guys that we just combine all our files together and uh, sell them. Try to make a little side money. Put those in the comments. Facebook.com. Before I leak anything, I shouldn't have. Also, PatriotNationDesigns.com. So what we do at Patriot Nation is um, we sell these files. You can buy them individually on the homepage if you are a non-member or if you, maybe you just don't do a lot of uh, woodworking. You can just swing on in here and buy whatever file you want. Um, there we have a custom file conversion that will come straight to me. I will get an email for that. Um, for non-members, it is fifty dollars per file, though. That is a big price just for one file. If you become a member, though, it's twenty dollars a month, one dollar per download, two dollars per three three D file download. You get customer support. Get that with both plans, obviously. Um, exclusive file content, Patriot Nation stuff. We have some files that we will only put on the website compared to each of our Etsy pages. Um, any files that we collaborate together on, say I take one of the other creators that I work with, Taylor Drew or Mike, one of their files and kind of work it and create something out of it, we'll, that'll be a Patriot Nation exclusive item. Um, some of our three panel flags, some of the clocks that we got sending out right now, um, but if you're a hobbyist, it's a $30 custom file conversion. So $30. Um, you might as well become a member at this point for $20 and $30 for the custom file conversion. You just become a member and then you get a dollar downloads. Uh, it's 50 bucks for individual non-member conversions. Um, yeah, otherwise you can do the $40 one. You get 100 downloads per month um, and $20 file conversions. So if you need a file converted for ten more dollars than the hobbyist plan, you get same price for the conversions, but you get hundred downloads a month. So pretty, 
pretty easy math there as far as that goes. So for the negative one of these, I'm going to do the same thing as what I did with the other one. Control Shift G makes all these individual. I'm going to unselect the outside one, path, exclusion, and it just creates the negative effect of what we had. And that's what Cricut users apparently need to cut their files, I believe. That's what I was told. I don't have a lot of Cricut users, so. Save that as a negative, and now it's good to go out to the customer. Um, I think that about wraps it up. Um, I'd be more than happy to answer any questions if you want to shoot me a question on here, or you can wait till after this is all done and ask a question. But I think that's it. Um, thanks for coming. Uh, try to do at least one stream a week, maybe. Um, also, check out Logan. Corliss, Logan, if you want to put your uh, um, page in here, go for it. Um, he also does live streams of him cutting. He cut um, a file yesterday. I think he does Friday, and they call it Friday Night Lights. Um, they cut files live on stream along with uh, Wayland Woodworking. Um, yeah, just cool to see that kind of stuff. And they're both streaming at the same time, so. Kind of, kind of fun to watch that happen. I'm going to try to pull up one more thing for you guys. Just as a um, kind of personal promotion kind of deal. Mm, I don't think I'm going to be able to pull it up. Oh, wait, wait, wait. So if you haven't seen that video that, um, oh, sorry about your ears, but here's that file that I showed at the beginning of the stream. I'll show it again real quick while we're here. Uh, Coral Gables. Yeah, I think that's it. Just going to show you a video that uh, we had one of my customers uh, cut that I think is pretty awesome and worth sharing to you guys. So here's the file. It's uh, the Coral Gables Police Station. Um, so I've got the ambulance here, got the fire truck, got the whole building. And this building is a brand new building. Not sure exactly when it was released or if they're just doing like a grand opening on it exactly what, but um, yeah. So. By getting custom conversions, you will get great detail just like you've seen before, but also, um, yeah, there's, there's just a lot you can do with these files once they're converted, but pretty cool. So here's a little video on this file actually being cut, which I thought was pretty sweet. I turn the sound down so you guys don't have your ears bleed. Hey Steve, how's it going? What program? Um, I use Fusion 360 to initially draw the file. I use uh, Carbide Create to kind of finalize it, uh, make sure all my loops are closed, um, kind of post processing kind of stuff, and then I'll finalize it in Inkscape and ship it out to the customer basically from Inkscape. But you can see how that file kind of turned out. Then you'll get this kind of detailed with every kind of file that you send through our customs. I mean, we'll make sure we get it. I mean, that's pretty crazy. The little coral, coral gables. This little guy right here. <laughs> Came out that clean on that. And Daniel will be 
then it will be epoxy pouring this. So um, he typically posts in the Shapeoko uh, and Nomad users group, unofficial users group. But yeah, so this is this is the exact image that he sent me. You can see that in the background here. That's the exact image that he sent me. I drew this all line for line. Took a little while, but kind of cool. But I think that wraps it up. One last time, here's our start in Fusion 360. Started half of it, mirrored it over, brought it into Carbide Create uh, with the rough file, kind of cleaned it up, made sure all our loops are good. Which one? The uh, Coral Gables fire, fire Station? I would say at least eight hours. That was a, a very long one. Yeah. Brought it in the Carbide Create, kind of cleaned it up. Then finalized it in uh, Inkscape. All free programs. Fusion 360, free to non-commercial use. Uh, Inkscape, free. And Carbide Create, free. All free programs. Throw the positive one in there real quick. Just so you can see what we got going on here. But that's it. Um, thanks again, everybody, for stopping by. If you're not a member of PatriotNationDesigns.com, I highly suggest it. Um, we get a lot of feedback from people saying, wow, you guys help my store that much already just people selling files i mean and we take the work out of it we take the work out of it make it so that you just have to focus on your machine and doing your part um last thing you need to do is spend eight hours trying to do this when you can just have someone else do it and for 20 bucks for a conversion for a pro member i mean i think that's well worth your money and you get good quality so, all right, uh, we'll talk to you guys later. Uh, thanks for swinging by, and I will do another live stream hopefully uh, next week, maybe next week Saturday again. But, uh, yeah, take it easy, guys. I got to figure out how to end the stream.
some time Can't you see I wanted it to be us now Darling, if you knew how this would turn out We let the stars shine bright Yeah, I've been waiting too long for you 